Welcome to part two of the volumetrics tutorial in Blender. Previously, we looked at the different types of nodes and what they do, how they work. And in this part, we're going to look at some use cases. So how to set it up to get the look you want. And for example, you how you can use it to create a more realistic laser with volumes and lights. All right. I hope you enjoy. Let's dive in. All right. So then we've got the volume shaders under control, right? So we know how it works. And um, how do we set this up, for example, for, for a render? Now, let's imagine that we have a little scene of, for example, um, I'm just going to make this into a stretched, stretched kind of um, scene. And I'm going to add one little window right here. Let's let's just bring this to the top there. There's one window that's going to be causing light to enter, right? And I think it will be fun if we separate this P selection and let's add a few a few kind of grill holes that we will just delete faces. There we go. And now if we set our camera to be inside of this, right? So let's just press a number at zero and let's just make sure that our camera is going to be inside of our volume. There we go. We can actually now get quite a beautiful, hello, there we go. A beautiful light shining through this little grill there. Right, let me change my camera to be square for a bit. There we go. To visualize this, I am just going to add, let's do a sunlight. Shift A, light, sun. There we go. Now let's just make sure that this shines into the direction that we actually get some light through our little little grill there. Something like this, perhaps. And let's go back. All right. So now we see that we got our reflection, or our reflection like a, a light through that grill there. But we don't see anything right there, right? We don't see the light rays because we don't have a volume yet. All right, so let's just hit Shift A, Mesh, Cube, and this is going to be our volume. So just scale that up so it's larger than your camera, right? Make sure your camera is in your cube. And then we can just hit New Shader, delete this, Shift A, and let's add a volume scatter, right? Because I want light to actually scatter. That will make it look like it is actually, and we got that nice caught ray, right? So volume and volume. There we go. Now the density is quite high. So let's set this to 0.1, something like that. And let's see how it looks, right? So you can see that we already get some lights that is passing through this little grill, right? So let's try a different density, something like that. And let's crank up the anisotropy <laughs> for a bit there, right? And you can see that that is also controlling how far that light is going to be passing in there. Right, so let's just crank up with the strength of our sun for a little bit there. Like that, for example. You can see that now we got some beautiful light entering our object, right? And that is with our sunlight, of course. You can also change this to be, for example, on spotlight. And if we move this a little bit closer to our grill, for example, like that, we can also control the spread quite nicely. Right, so you can see already that this is spreading out more. Beautiful. And that allows us to control more of that value, right? So let's crank up the power. That's looking quite beautiful. And now if we set this radius higher, we can also control um, how tight those light rays are going to be, basically. So the bigger you make your radius, the smoother your, your light and your shadows are basically going to be. And if you set this spot size to be less, you can see that they are basically going to enter in a tighter space as well. If you crank that up, of course, you will have a wider area until light is no longer able to go further up or down because of the limitations of the shape of the grill, right? So this is looking quite nice, all right? Another example of light passing through a volume is a laser. Right, and you know you've seen this when you shine a laser onto, for example, the grass or a tree, and you have the clearest day you can imagine. 
you won't really see the path of the laser but just the point where it hits the object but when you have a little morning haze or a little fog in your environment and then you shine your laser you can actually see the light path of that laser right so uh, the way that works is something we can try in blender as well right so you can create a laser with an object and add an emission material but that's gonna look more fake so if we actually well re recreate that the way it works in real life it's gonna look way more accurate as well so let's add a cylinder shift a mesh and cylinder and i'm just going to uh, scale this up in edit mode i'm gonna move this up to let's say there okay and then i'm gonna press a s shift z scale that down a little bit there we go this is gonna be our light path our volume right and the reason why i make this cylindrical is because i don't need an entire volume in my scene for just one laser okay we just don't that's gonna just over complicate the rendering take much more time so keep your volumes as tightly packed as possible to what you want to achieve right a laser is very thin so our volume is going to be very thin as well so i'm going to add uh, a little light source right there at the bottom shift a light and let's make this we can make this an area light i guess and s set minus one to just make that go into the other direction and let's go into rendered view right now it looks like garbage because this is still not a volume so let's hit new shader delete this and add a volume scatter there we go correct it into the volume and now let's just crank down the density to be about point one first there we go and now for our area light, we can crank up our power to be, let's say, a thousand first. Let's see how it looks. But it doesn't really look like a laser yet. Reason why is because, because we got a lot of spread in our beam, right? So this is now going in, well, basically that direction, that direction, that direction, that, that, that. So we need to crank that down to just go into the very tight direction of a laser right our laser is a very directed beam of light so we need to resemble that by just decreasing the spread to be about perhaps three degrees and you can already see what that does to our light right our volume beautiful right so the closer we make this the closer our light or the tighter our light source is going to be um until you make this zero that's the size you can get this but i'm gonna make this about one or two perhaps right there we go now we can just make this red and we get our red laser right crank up the power to ten thousand, perhaps and you can really get that light source emission core as well and the farther you travel of course the less strong that's gonna be because that's just how volume scattering works right a light that is traveling through a volume the farther it goes has more chance to scatter into different directions and be less strong right that is just how that works so that's why it's going to be the most strong at the source and the less at the end right and that is why this looks way more accurate than for example adding an emission material to a cylinder beam right if we set this to be one megawatts we can really see we got that light shining through and if we just move up the cylinder and scale it out a little bit we can also get that little bit of spread into our light source right so let's make this volume a little bit less thick 0.05 perhaps maybe even less 0.02 you can now see that our um our light is getting longer and longer as well and if we scale this entire thing down in all directions except z we get a much thinner laser right and now we can just parent our area light to our cylinder Control p object and let's set the origin of our volume at the bottom there origin to 3d cursor so now we can control the direction of this laser right we can actually point this at stuff and while we have a very low call of volume going on that actually make this laser look nice all right um, so that is something you could use for a lot of things as well right so try to keep your volumes as local as possible to limit the amount of bounces that are going through your entire scene in your volumes right and um, so that will be that i think that is 
enough information for now. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We will enjoy any one of those. And then we will see you in the next one. Cheers.